Good night to have you with us. We've just done PMQs unpacked. I'm still joined in the studio by Tim Shipman, Chief Political Commentator for the Sunday Times. Let's take a look at some of the best of the rest uh, then. Uh, the backbench questions which are worth picking up from. We'll go first of all to the DUP leader, Sir Geoffrey Donaldson. Government is. Please get him in there. Sir Geoffrey Donaldson. Thank you, Mr Speaker. The Prime Minister will know that many families across the United Kingdom are struggling with the increased cost of living and rising energy costs. But in Northern Ireland, that is compounded by the protocol. 27% is the increase in the cost of bringing goods from Great Britain to Northern Ireland when we can get access to those goods. It is costing business £2.5 million every day, almost a £1 billion a year, the cost of the protocol. The Prime Minister talks about uniting this nation and levelling up. He could do that by removing the Irish Sea border and restoring Northern Ireland's place fully within the UK internal market. Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, I must say that I support passionately the uh, indignation of, of the right honourable gentleman opposite. And, and, and yes, uh, yes, Mr Speaker, uh, I never thought uh, when we negotiated that, that this would be uh, with 200 businesses. 200 businesses have stopped supplying Northern Ireland. Foods are being blocked, Mr Speaker. Christmas cards are being surcharged. And frankly, Mr Speaker, the EU is implementing this in an insane and pettifogging way. Uh, and we need to sort it out. And I completely support what he's saying. Well, that's interesting, Tim Shepman. Combining both cost of living and the Northern Ireland Protocol. Insane and pettifogging. That's... That's news. That's news, isn't it? Yes, that's, that's... Boris Johnson flagrantly committing news. That's a, it's an escalation. Uh, yeah. I mean, well, everyone's supposed to be getting on nicely. Liz yes. Truss has been to Brussels and they had and nice lots talks. Lots of talk about positive talks and both working for a solution and uh, the PM's just blown it all up again. Um, it, one doesn't have to have been in politics for 20 years to have developed the levels of cynicism that I have <laughs> to wonder whether he might have just provided a banal answer to that question. I thought, oh, no. Why not? A bit of a distraction. And you look at what, you know, some of the papers, the, the Mail and the Telegraph are doing now, sort of rallying behind him, that will give them another meaty page lead at the very least to chew on. Yeah, and possibly, you know, if we don't get Sue Gray today... That could be a splash in some of those sneak newspapers. On, sneak onto some of the front pages. Yeah. I would also play to his, his base at a time when uh, he probably needs to do that. Uh, right, uh, so that was uh, DUP leader Sir Geoffrey Donaldson. Let's hear now from the Labour MP Lloyd Russell Moyle. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Happy unbirthday to him. Happy unbirthday to him. Because just like the Mad Hatter, he didn't need the excuse of a birthday to have a party, but it did help, didn't it? So when he had groups of people singing to him when illegal um, gatherings indoor were illegal and communal singing was banned, my constituents think that he has lied. My constituents think that he lied to this House and my constituents think he lied to them when he was partying and telling them all... Oh, oh, order, order. In passing Hoyle again. what your constituents say, but you can't continue to labour that one point. Lloyd Russell Moyle. So, I would prefer to be led by a lawyer than a liar. Will he now resign? It is against the Commons rules to accuse someone of being a liar. The Honourable Member will be withdrawing that last comment. I, I withdraw it. That's what my constituents think, not mine. I do. Less of that, Prime Minister. Well, I, I, I think that the, the Honourable Gentleman, I'm afraid, in everything he said just now, plainly doesn't know what he is talking about. He plainly doesn't know what he's talking about. But, I, but what, and I, what I can tell him, and I, what I can tell his uh, constituents, is that irrespective of, of what they want to focus on, and I understand why they do, Mr Speaker, this government is going to get on with the job and deliver for the people of this country. Cheryl Murray. Well, uh, Lloyd Russell Moyle's got his clip for social media. He'll, he'll cut off the bit where he withdrew calling Boris Johnson a liar. Uh, yes, I mean, he knew what he was doing there and he knew he would have to withdraw it, but he went and did it anyway. I mean, someone on Twitter described it as an effective kamikaze attack. Um, there's something to be said for that in terms of getting the punchiest version. And, you know, and he turned round Johnson's attack on Starmer. You know, you're a lawyer, a leader, and he's turned it into, well, I'd rather have a lawyer than a liar. Um, 
which is smart. And he's done it in what, 10 minutes? Yeah. And, um, you know, there we go, as you say. It's a decent clip, um, which you'll be seeing all over the Twitters as all, the day goes all on. All over the Twitters. Well, I'll take a break from journalists saying that Sue Gray definitely is always isn't coming. Um, one little bit of breaking news, which has emerged during the course of PMQs. Do you remember the uh, the animals being evacuated from Afghanistan? Well, how the, could we forget? How could we forget? Um, well, the Foreign Affairs Select Committee has started re releasing uh, emails which appear to show that Boris Johnson did authorise the staff and the animals to be uh, evacuated. There was a big debate about this at As the time. As people in the Ministry of Defence, officials in the Foreign Office, close friends of uh, Penn Farthing, uh, the chap who was doing the evacuating, have all previously claimed, but of course, uh, in defiance of Number 10, says it never happened. Uh, well, fancy that. Yeah, so the email uh, from the private office of Zach Goldsmith, who's obviously a, uh, a government minister and also friend of... Uh, Boris Johnson and Carrie Johnson, uh, said, uh, we spoke, thank you for your time. The charity operating can ball seeking evacuation. They're members of staff. Uh, equivalent charity Nozad, run by an ex oil marine, has received a lot of publicity. And the PM has just authorised their staff and animals to be evacuated and hoping uh, they be treated in the same capacity. So this appears to confirm that Boris Johnson did authorise uh, for, um, what was his name? I forgot his name again. Farthing. Pen Farthing. Pen Farthing. Um, uh, to uh, release, uh, to, to evacuate the, the animals. Again, I think that would be quite a big story this afternoon, and it may yet be, depending on the activities of Sue Gray in the next few hours. Uh, Tim Shipman, lovely to see you. Off, off to Westminster now? Oh, yes. <laughs> um, several people actually on the, on the YouTube saying how much they were enjo they've enjoyed your first two books, and is there going to be another one? There is. Um, it's taken three years. <laughs> it's supposed to be out in the autumn. Let yeah. us pray. <laughs> Best of luck with all of that. And, of course, you can read Tim in the Sunday Times. <laughs>